Hello, my name is Katie and it's October, which means it's officially time to get spooky. And I'm here today to talk about my October TBR. I'm in the Halloween spirit, as you can see by my very low effort costume. But who doesn't love a good cat costume for Halloween? So let's just dive right in to what I want to read in October. I'm in the mood for all the fall books. I just want to get cozy and spooky and bring on the fall October reads. Starting off October, we have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. I am finally making my way through Harry Potter, rereading the series and annotating them. Did I read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in September? Tune in to my September wrap up to find out. <laughs> yeah, I'm just so excited to be making my way through this and I feel like with all the snakes and stuff that happened in Chamber of Secrets, you know, the actual like chamber Slytherin vibes gives me very Halloween vibes, but just Hogwarts in general gives me fall and October and Halloween vibes. Last year, my boyfriend and I dressed up as Dumbledore and Ravenclaw for Halloween. So, you know, it's always a good time when it's Harry Potter related. And I'm just in love with the series. Harry Potter means everything to me. It's how I got into reading as a child. I don't even think I need to say what Harry Potter is about. If you don't know, what rock have you been living underneath your whole life? Next is a buddy read with the lovely Isabella over at Throne of Pages. We are going to be reading Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco, which I've seen the series around for forever and October just seems like the perfect time to read it. I've really had my eye on it for a while and when Isabella was like, let's buddy read this, I was like, yes, let's do it. So I'm excited. This is also one of Madison Mary's favorite series she says the ship in this is just like fantastic and hearing her rave about it i know we have like very similar tastes <laughs> so if she loves it i'll probably love it i hope me and isabella both love it it's gonna be a good time and it just seems like perfect for halloween time perfect for october so let's get it let's get it audrey rose wadsworth was born to a privileged life as a lord's daughter she lives a life of social teas and silk dresses but she has a forbidden secret life audrey often slips away to her uncle's laboratory to study none other than corpses that's right, she is well-versed in the gruesome practice of forensic medicine. So when Audrey begins to work on a string of serial murderers, she is drawn in to the investigation. And it's kind of also sprinkled in with the real life case of Jack the Ripper, which is a very famous murder case that remains unsolved. I actually watched the BuzzFeed, I've heard about it like forever and ever, but I love, love BuzzFeed Unsolved and they did a whole episode on Jack the Ripper so I feel like I learned a lot from that so I know maybe I'll, like before I start this I'll re-watch that unsolved episode and I'll make Isabella watch it so that she has some background on the case as well. I mean forensic medicine, Jack the Ripper, murder, just seems like the perfect recipe for a nice October spooky read. Next is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I actually got this in my first ever book of the month box, which you can use my link in the description below if you want to get your first box for $9.99. I've just been loving working with them and I was so excited that this was one of the choices for the first month that I partnered with them. I've also been really getting into K-pop so I feel like that makes me uh, more interested in Korean culture and I've just been learning about it like through being into BTS and all those other groups. So I feel like this is a good time to read this book and just learn even more because sometimes pop culture is the best way to immerse yourself in a culture. I've also heard it has a soft, sweet boy as the love interest, and we honestly don't get enough of those kinds of characters in YA sometimes. Like the one and only Jem Carstairs, the other soft, sweet boy of my soul. And I'm ready for like a soft, sweet boy love interest. Wicked Fox is about Mi Young, who is a Gumiho, a nine-tailed fox who eats the souls of men to survive. She is half human though and has a soft spot for people, so she tries to only eat bad men. This is also set in modern day Seoul, so it is urban fantasy, which is really cool. When a young boy her own age is being attacked by a goblin in the woods, Mi Young exposes herself as a Gumiho to save Ji Hoon from a certain death. However, in the process, she loses her fox bead, which is her Gumiho soul. Now she must choose between retrieving her fox bead and resuming her immortal life or 
saving this young boy. It just seems like it's gonna be good. I've heard nothing but great things about it. And I mean, just look at this cover. It's so pretty and I love the back too. I'm just really, really excited to read it. It's been on my shelf and it's been calling to me. It's been calling to me, so. Now is the time. Next up, I'm going to read The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I have been saying that I'm going to be buddy reading this book with Steph from Shop and Read and Madison from Princess of Paperback for like months and we just put it off and put it off and put it off. I have these beautiful UK editions. They are stunning and I think October is the month that I will commit to it. Steph and Madison don't know, but I'm probably gonna drag them into it. We'll see if they come along for the ride or not. But something about fall just makes me want to sink my teeth into a big juicy fantasy novel and now is the time. So this is actually what would happen if the Dark Lord won and a new uprising is being planned. There's also a really interesting magic system where you like eat metals to get power. Honestly, the description is very vague. It's an epic high fantasy. I've heard nothing, like literally nothing but good things about it. And I mean, Brandon Sanderson is just known for being a master of the craft. I have been wanting to get more and more into his writing for a long time. So I just think now is the time to do it. So I'm going to commit myself to reading The Final Empire in October. And next up, after that big gigantic fantasy, I know I'm gonna need a little palette cleanser. So I'm gonna read The Titan's Curse, which is the third book in Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I've been slowly but surely making my way through this series. It is a male grade following Percy Jackson, who is a demigod and the son of Poseidon, as he goes to Camp Half-Blood and discovers his demigod powers, makes friends along the way. It's a really great middle grade series with important life lessons and you get to learn about Greek mythology through fun stuff, which is great. And in this third novel, Percy receives a distress call from Grover, his satyr BFF, and he must go rescue him. I mean, it's just some fun Greek god cuteness and important life lessons. Next up is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I mean, this is probably the most hype book of October. Everyone is talking about it and I'm going to a Liberdugo signing so I can't wait and I have heard Lee speak a few times and she is just brilliant. I know whatever she's going to say at the signing is probably going to move me because this is a very dark book and I know it has tons and tons of trigger warnings so please please look those up beforehand if you are someone that likes to read trigger warnings before going into a novel because I know it deals with some very heavy stuff but honestly I am ready for it. I am really excited to see what Lee does as an adult writer and this is her first ever adult novel and it's also kind of like a take on dark academia which is a really interesting direction for her to go in so can't wait. Ninth House follows Alex Stern who is the only survivor of a gigantic homicide. She is contacted by a secret society and they set her up for her freshman year at Yale and she is going to investigate the occult underground going on of Yale University. Lee Bardugo herself actually went to Yale, which is a really interesting fact because she definitely knows what it's like to be a student there. And I definitely think the Ivy League has some unique characteristics of its own. So hopefully it is explored a little bit in the novel, just what the culture is like there. I actually talked to Lee Bardugo at the King of Scar signing saying I was really excited for Ninth House just to see like, how she talks about like privilege on like Ivy League campuses and stuff like that. And she's like, I don't know if Yale will let me back on campus after this book comes out. So we'll see. The other book that I really wanted to get to is Grave Maidens by Kelly Kuhn. This is a book that comes out October 29th, but I have an e-arc of this through NetGalley, so I'm hoping to get to it before it comes out so I can have a review up. It is the start of a new fantasy duology, and in this world, three maidens are selected to follow the dying king into the afterlife when Kamani's little sister, Nene, is selected as one of the grave maidens. Nene thinks it's a great honor, but Kamami sees it for the death sentence that it is. Determined to save her little sister, she infiltrates the palace and tries to heal the king. However, when she infiltrates the palace, she stumbles across some secrets that are more than she bargained for. It just sounds like a really awesome sisterly relationship, fierce fantasy duology, and like everything that I love in a fantasy. So I'm really excited to see how this one pans out. I honestly was like totally gripped from the first time that I read the description, and I can't wait to read it. This next book is a book that I'm 
I'm definitely going to try and pick up an audiobook in October. Totally does not fit the Halloween -y vibe at all, but that is American Royals by Catherine McGee. I've just had my eye on it ever since I first read about the description, but it's basically like if America won the Revolutionary War, but George Washington became the king and started a monarchy, and now we are following his descendants in modern day times basically the American royal family and we follow the three princes and princesses of America and all the drama that comes along with it. I think it will be a really really entertaining read on audiobook. Besides that I don't have any specific audiobook lined up. I'll just see what comes through on Scribd or on my library and take it as it goes. I try not to be too strict with my audiobook TBR. I just kind of see what I'm feeling at the moment and go for it. So I usually listen to like two to three audiobooks a month, so I'll probably end up picking up another one before October is over, but I don't know what that will be. And there you have it. That is my TBR for October. I am really excited to get to these books. It's finally fall. It feels fall. It just feels like the perfect time of year to read these books, and I just think I'm going to have a great time this month with reading. Please let me know down below what you are reading in October, and have a very spooky month. Until the next time, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.